Welcome back to the channel and thank you for being here. Just to say, this video is proudly sponsored by FS Academy and they've got a new bundle called Zero to Hero which offer five training packs in one package. That is IFR, VFR, Jetliner, Navigator and Commander. Priced at $69.99, this represents roughly around 40% discount from the full lineup with a total of 60 training missions produced by a real world airline captain. All the links for FS Academy will be in the description below. Anyway, it's now time to get into today's video. Hello folks, welcome to the Cessna 182 in MSFS and today I'm going to go through my easy uh, top VR tips for really good performance. These things I'm going to show today are things that you can do right now. They're not going to you know, mean too much tweaking, too much messing around, swapping files and all that kind of thing. It's just common sense, uh, you know, things that you need to ensure to get the best performance out of VR. Because obviously it's a bit of a minefield at the best of times, I realize, you know. Actually, I shouldn't have put my avionics on yet. I need to start this beast. Um, right, I think we're all good. Clear prop and all that good stuff. She fires into life. This is the Carinado 182, by the way. Nice little aircraft. Not a studio level or anything like that, but it's uh, decent. That will do. Right now, avionics can come on. And we'll find a runway. So I always say, folks, and uh, forgive me if I sound like a broken record, but some of these things are not sinking in, it seems. Don't go too crazy with your VR settings. It's the most obvious thing anyone can say, but most people are running far too high VR settings. You can't run the same as flat screen. VR is incredibly demanding and just turn them down. And the first thing I'd recommend is actually going to a place like London City with a complex aircraft and try and get a decent level of performance. I mean, 30 frames per second, believe it or not, is doable uh, for flight simming, unless you're flying really low to the ground and very fast. You know, if you're just doing general aviation flying and even airline flying, you can get away with 30 frames per second, but ideally you want to be half of the refresh rate of your headset. So 90 frames, sorry, 90 hertz would be 45 frames per second. That kind of thing. So that's my first tip. Second tip is downscale the resolution. Pretty confident that most people cannot run the full native resolution of their headsets. Maybe not even the Reva G2, depending on your system. It's okay to downscale the resolution. In fact, most of the time, you won't notice too much of a drop in image quality, but the frame rate will be hugely different. Like for instance, I sometimes run the Pimax Crystal at 3500 by 4142. It still looks really sharp, really nice. And I'm guessing 45 frames per second on the button most of the time. Anyway, let's uh, take off now. Oh, getting a lot of wind here, trying to correct. Whoa! <laughs> okay, we're airborne in a fashion. My next tip is lay off the heavy hitters in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That is, oh hello, there's someone there coming into land. <laughs> um, that is level of detail. That is a killer. Take it down, guys, to 80, 90%. Um, in VR, generally speaking, unless you've got a very high resolution headset, you don't really notice the LOD. I would recommend Auto FPS and Smooth Flight. I do have a video of both of them on the channel. They make a big difference because they adjust the level of detail to a certain FPS number that you pick. For example, 45 frames per second, 90 hertz, 40 frames per second, 80 hertz. Get the idea. Here's another thing as well. A lot of you out there actually don't mind DLSS. I hate it, quite honestly. I'm not a fan at all. I'm a TAA guy. However, it's probably because I've got a very powerful GPU, I can get away with it. But you can run DLSS, but make sure it's in DirectX 12 mode. 
because you get better performance than in DirectX 11. If you run TAA, run it in DirectX 11. I don't know why that's a thing, but it is. Blame a Sabo, not me. <laughs> now, if you do run DLSS, then in the OpenXR toolkit, make sure to use either CAS or FSR with sharpening. You can play around with it to your heart's content, but it does make a very nice difference. And actually, in all fairness, for aircraft like this with steam gauges, it does look really good and you'll get a very nice boost in performance. Look at that shower over there. Oh, do you know, this is the kind of weather I love flying in the most. I really do. Now, in terms of the OpenXR toolkit, yes, it's still relevant, still works. And if you can, use foveated rendering, whether it's fixed or with eye tracking. It does make a difference, up to about seven to eight frames per second in VR. That's a big deal. That's the difference between 38 frames per second and 45, and 45 frames per second is really nice and smooth along the ground. Now, motion projection is another thing that is a contentious one. Some people love it, like me, some people hate it. I think a lot of the reason why people hate it is because with motion reprojection, in order for it to work properly, again, you've got to make sure that you're hitting your desired FPS reliably. If you go below it, then motion reprojection will keep kicking in and out, and that will cause even more stutters than if it was off completely. But the great thing about reprojection, especially if you're only using one frame, is that it feels so smooth across the ground and very fluid. So I would recommend that, especially for Quest 3 users, virtual desktop, oh my god, it's so good, with SSW, which is their sort of version of reprojection, it is superb. If I remember, I'll put a link in the description below of my virtual desktop settings, and yeah, I do rave about VDXR, that is OpenXR integration with virtual desktop, it's brilliant. For those who prefer Link on the Quest 3, well, switch off reprojection, it doesn't work so well. I recommend using the Oculus Tray Tool, if that's what it's called these days, or Meta Tray Tool, because that way you can set a preset and it will remember it every time, because unfortunately, and this catches a lot of people out, with the Quest 3, the reprojection switches on automatically every time you start. So you need to switch it off manually and it's a pain in the arse. And if you're using Link, then you really do need to use the tray tool so that it switches off um, automatically every time you start the flight, so long as it's obviously running in the taskbar. Talking to the taskbar, make sure you've got nothing running in your taskbar apart from any add-ons that need access to the sim. Here's another bit of essential advice, actually, and this one requires no technical knowledge at all, just a bit of patience. Because MSFS is a very fickle beast and it runs online, which I've never liked, but I guess that's how it has to be to get all this beautiful scenery, you may find that it will run differently day to day. For example, you may have enjoyed a flight yesterday and everything was running perfect. You go to the sim, feeling all positive, <laughs> only to realize that the sim is running like a pile of crap. And I get it, guys, it's frustrating. But keep in mind, a lot of these times when that happens, it's down to the servers. So maybe switch server, maybe try offline mode, or maybe just go and do something else. Maybe go and mow the lawn or something. Go out and spend some time with the missus. Take her out for a dinner, you know. You've probably been busy simming too much and she needs some attention, I don't know, whatever. But, uh, and then the next day, you may find that everything's working fine again. So that is worth noting. So actually, I didn't really mention many other heavy hitters other than uh, LOD. Another one is clouds. You may agree that these clouds look fantastic. Well, these are not on ultra settings. Even with a 4090, I don't run ultra settings, I run high. There's a big difference between high and ultra when it comes to frame rate. Again, up to about five to six frames per second in VR. That's a big deal. Also, ray march reflections, they're not very optimized, take them off. Switch off ambient occlusion unless you've got a decent computer. I run mine at medium, and that's with a 4090 because it is extremely resource intensive. And shadows, that's another one that is not very well optimized. And here's my settings at the moment. And people are often surprised by this, but look, this is what I'm running at the moment. This is with a 13900K 4090. 
There you are, look, I'm downscaling the resolution of my crystal, still looks fantastic. Level of detail, that is a bit higher due to my processor, but you know, feel free to back it off to 80 or 95%. That is absolutely fine. In fact, I've forgotten where it was now. Let's put it at 130. <laughs> um, Pre-caching, that's important actually for VR, but you don't need it on Ultra. In fact, knocking it back one does help performance as well. You see there, that's my clouds set to high. AF, well, for most modern graphics cards, 16 times is good. There is another way of doing it, completely switching that off and then switching on uh, AF 16 times in your NVIDIA application. Texture super sampling, that's a bit of a heavy hitter, but again, for 4090, that's fine. Same with um, uh, texture synthesis as well. I only have that on Ultra because of my system. But look at all these things I've either got to off or low or medium. Like, it's just not worth it. And by the way, light shafts are off because they interfere with uh, foveated eye tracking, which is a bit of a shame. And yeah, I'm running DirectX 11 at the moment. You see here. And by the way, just check that because sometimes the sim decides to change to DirectX 12 without you knowing. That's another reason why sometimes you may find your performance has changed. But say if I was running DRSS, here look, which I prefer quality, I would then change this to DirectX 12 and then restart the sim. Also NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, that is a thing now for VR, I'd recommend having that on. And one more thing as well, HAGS or GPU Scheduling. It is probably the most elusive thing to pin down in MSFS history for VR. Some people have a big performance boost, some people don't. Now for me, I find that GPU Scheduling turned on really helps my performance, but some people really find the opposite so I can't really say either way on that one just to experiment. Another thing I get asked is how do I start the sim? What is my procedure? Well what I do is I start the headset first make sure that's all running then I get my motion rig all fired up anything that's sort of outside of the sim get that running and sorted then I load MSFS and I don't jump into VR until I'm sat on the ramp in the actual aircraft. I'd recommend that as well guys. So I think that's probably enough tips and tricks for now in this video. Most of them are very simple and really just common sense. Um, if you'd like me to do this as a series and show you more complex stuff then please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching as always. Take care and bye for now.